So, um, my section was on uh, local storage APIs and uh, about mo um, uh, modifications to the DOM. I'll go into both of those, but yeah. So, first of all, an API which is an application programming interface, which uh, means that, um, that it's a way for... I'll just read what it says. Application programming interface in its simplest form is code that allows for two software programs to communicate with each other. APIs within a program are a set of standards which permit outside software systems to report uh, request information from the original platform. Josh Walker, an analyst at Forrester Research, describes building an application with no APIs as basically like building a house with no doors. The API, for all commu computing purposes, is how you open the blinds and the doors and exchange information. I just think it was easier to understand what it was if we knew what an API was. So, um, <laughs> moving into the stuff. So there's two types of storage. Uh, going back to what we're doing, local storage. Um, two types of storage. There's local storage and session storage. So um, they're basically the exact same thing, um, except one is uh, the session storage is based on, like it, when you're on the internet, it's based on what you're doing right now, whereas local storage is stuff that is being saved to your computer right now. So it's like they're doing the same thing, but one is based on your current usage and one is based on just local files. So um, important distinction. Um, so in regard to that, uh, between session and local storage, um, they can... <coughs> <excuse> <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. I have that bronchitis mixed with the flu now, so I'm just oh, no. all messed up. Um, so session and local storage um, can store be stored into files of 5 megabytes. I was thinking with our um, eventual project outcome um, that we, would for, uh, we wouldn't need much more than that because uh, local storage of 5 megabytes is still a, thousand, uh, sorry, a million characters. Um, yeah. I went back and looked at, I had a 29 page essay, which is a 32 kilobyte file, and I thought, well, you know, that's that's ridiculous, but um, if a 29 page essay can't, that wouldn't even be 5 megabytes, I think we're okay with a program that stores words, so um, local storage should be fine for what we want to do, um, oh. and internet cookies are additional storage by websites uh, beyond the capacity, and a similar to uh, session storage, uh, not as flexible as local storage, but... I don't know, just a few important things. Any questions so far? Or, or No, this is great. Okay. So let's look at some code. This is my favorite part. <laughs> All right. So last time we looked at um, a little bit about arrays. So rather than do the objects, I just had a, a string array. I picked a bunch of movies, Harry Potter, Zoolander, The Count of Monte Cristo, Inception, and Lord of the Rings. Some great movies. So we have this array of movies. And it can be stored in the local storage by doing local storage dot set item. So that's that right there is our main thing for storing things in the local storage. So local storage dot set item, and then brackets stored slot name. So this is whatever we want to call the the section where this is going to be stored, and then just do that JSON stringify thing that we uh, Julio covered last week. So we're storing that string as a JSON um, of movies into this slot name or another way we could do it as individual things like uh, local storage set item current movie Zoolander so like if the w movie I'm watching right now is Zoolander so that's stored in that way um, another important thing to know uh, local storage and session storage like we covered back here are exactly the same so they're stored exactly the same way um, this code is interchangeable so if you were to write the word session storage instead of local storage it does the exact same thing. So you can store local storage things into session storage and session storage things into local storage and things like that. But uh, just important to know that where we've got local storage, you could write session storage and it would still work. So that cool? Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, if we want to, we've now stored that local data. We can store it in these ways. But if we want to pull that data, we go... And we can make a variable, so like uh, variable list movies, um, if we want to make a list of all the movies, lo local storage, get item, and then we put the name of that variable. So back here we called it stored slot name, because I couldn't think of a better way. Um, and then so there's our stored slot name. 
And so if we wanted to print that, uh, console.log list movies, which is this here. So we'll just print a list. Or if we wanted to get our current movie, var current movie is local storage get item and then current movie. Just real simple. And then to display that console.log will display Zoolander. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so re if we want to remove data, there are a couple of different ways. We can actually a few different ways. First, we can go all scorched earth and delete everything, and that'll delete all of our local storage. And that's not just um, that's not just current movie or uh, it's current movie and list list movies and everything. It's everything that we've stored, and it's kind of scorched earth. But um, it's the, it's one approach that we can do. <coughs> and that could be used in, in like, let's say, a uh, clear all function or a reset function or something like that. Um, but there are other ways where we can delete um, at one string. So, like, if we did local storage remove item current movie, that'll remove current movie and what current movie is. So, not only will we lose Zoolander, but we will lose current movie. So... Um, a safer approach is to do something like local storage set item, current movie, and then just do just closed bracket uh, closed uh, quotations. So it's like you're setting it to nothing, basically. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> and now the next part. Now this is a lot more in depth than the other, um, but it's got a lot more to it. So, uh, but it's actually really simple. Um, so the next part is DOM manipulation. Um, again, what is a DOM? DOM stands for Document Object Model. Document Object Model is the order in which objects appear on a layout. Obviously, it can be much more complicated, but it's the general structure for our purposes. So we can have, uh, like a head, a body, there could be multiple divs. I just went with a very simple, um, simple little setup here, just to make it easier. And, uh, and we can change the, the way that these things are arranged. We can add parts to it and things like that. So we're going to cover a bit about that. So what is DOM manipulation? This boils down to one basic idea, that the DOM can be changed, like I said, with JavaScript. You can add to it by using create element and append to an existing element. You can remove items by using remove child, even default ones. And you can clone elements uh, reorder elements, basically reorganize the DOM in any way you see fit and for whatever reason you might wish. So again, let's look at the code. So if we wanted to create elements, we do something like document.createElement and then I, I went with the fifth, and you'll see why in a minute it's a stupid pun. However, the fifth element huh, does not exist in our layout. We need to do, add it somewhere. So um, I did that for the obviously for the pun element there. Um, so we've created this element and it doesn't exist anywhere on our layout. Like back here, we have a, here's our model and we can imagine that the fifth is sitting somewhere out here or wherever it's, it's just floating somewhere, not visible on the layout, but it's, oh. it's created. So if we were to, we've created our element and, um, um, if we wanted to add it somewhere, we have to do something like document uh, body, so in this case body because that's part of the body uh, section here. It's part of this section, so body. Um, append child, which I'll cover a bit more in a little bit. A new element. So we've created a new element here, which is our variable. Um, and that is part now of the body thing, of the body child thing. And So we'll look at that in just a second. That places our new element at the bottom of the body element. So here it is. So we see, here's our, our document view. We've got our head over here by itself, and our body over here by itself. So here's the fifth, script, and h1. So it's a newly added element, and it's connected to the body. Um, and we can remove elements just the same way, uh, docu using document body, remove child, and then in this case, new element. Um, uh, you may notice that we use the variable name from our create element script rather than the new element element name so we didn't we didn't actually write down the fifth we wrote the new element which is interesting um we use that because that's what's used in the append child and in the um the creation of the uh, adding it to the layout type thing so there's the variable rather than that so that's something worth knowing um again uh you can use this to remove objects that are native to the layout so 
We can remove like H1, we can remove script if you had divs. Um, any other object that is part of body, we can remove. Um, and that is pretty awesome. Or if the script is in here in the head and we can remove anything in the head, things like that. It's really cool that you can, can do that actually. Um, and so by removing a div, it removes everything under the div. So like if the div had a paragraph, it had, I don't know, a bunch of other things, it would remove everything that was in that chain. So another cool thing. Um, and we can also clone things. So um, what if we wanted to clone an element? This is a bit more complicated, but not by much. It requires a little explanation. Let's start by looking at this code. So we've got here, here's a footer. Um, and the div class is share, and share something, obviously, um, blah. So, in order to share it, uh, to duplicate this, this div, um, we've made a variable of share, which is the document query selector share. So it's dot share, which is this. And then, in order to, the clone of it would be share clone equals share dot clone node. So there's the command right there. So... In the past, we used uh, things like remove child, create child, create element, things like that. This is clone node, and then false. False means that it only clone this node. It doesn't mean clone the div next door and the heading and the body, just this this div that we're specifying. It's kind of misleading. I, I spent a bit of time trying to figure out why it was false, but yeah, that's why. And then uh, to display it after this, it would be document query selector and then hashtag footer append child share clone so this will be appended to share uh, to uh, our footer so it'll go automatically to the bottom of here and it'll look something like this so it'll be like you have your share div and then another one although it doesn't actually change the original code um, that it just changes for your current session if that makes sense so it okay. won't modify your original HTML. Like every time you run the script, it won't reclone it and make a new one and a new one, whatever. It'll be every time you load the session, there'll be share and then it will run the JavaScript and then it will make share clone sort of thing. Okay. So that's important to know. Now, another thing I wanted to look at real quick, uh, pen child. We talked about it a little bit before um, and this is a better example of what it actually does is it will attach it, append it to something else. So it appends or attaches um, query select, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the share thing, the, cl the clone of our original share, to the end of footer. So it'll, be, it'll go to the bottom of that. Um, I don't want to go too much into it because it's, it's fairly simple to understand. So but if you have any other questions, uh, let me know. I've got some great links for that. Um, so yes, so insert before. Um, this is another really cool thing is that... Um, you can change the, obviously you can change the order of where things are. So the native function of insert before will allow you to move an element to anywhere you would like, you might think look best uh, within the same parent. For example, if I wanted the fifth element to be placed before the heading, I would use the following code. So here's my heading. And if I wanted to move this, uh, this part here to in ahead of the heading, I would use, you know, make my new element and everything like that. And then uh, I would, make a variable for what I wanted to make it go before, and in this case, my heading, and then document body insert before new element, and then h1 element, which is this. So again, using the variables, not the, the names of the things. I'm not using quotations h1 or whatever, and it puts it before it. So um, <coughs> now there is no insert after command, um, but you can uh, basically do the same thing by doing something like this. Document query selector h1, and then documents body insert before new element, and then it's a bit more complicated, h1 element dot next sibling. So this next sibling thing looks for the next sibling after h1 element. So this will is basically the same as doing insert after. And so you can... Um, so it would put the fifth, for example, after the heading instead of before it. Like if it, instead of doing and saying we had a, a, a heading and a body, instead of saying before the body, we could say after the heading. In case, for example, you had other JavaScript which uh, put things uh, before the body and then it might get the two confused. And I don't know, it's, it's a good way to, to 
organize things and uh, another way to organize things if you need it. Um, so, but there was a function that on one of the websites I was looking at, which allowed you to do just an insert after, and it, it had two parameters of target and new element. Um, they were the opposite of the other, I noticed, uh, cause in here it was, here's the target and here's the element. Um, but it's, it's okay. I guess you can swap the two if you, if you really want to, but so insert after target new element and that there's the code right there. It's the exact same code as here. It's just, um, using these variables that have come in from external sources in the command. So I don't know, just seemed another way to do it. Sometimes it might, it might just save writing. Um, if you had a lot of that in your, in your program, thought I'd include it anyway. <laughs> cool. Um, and then that's it. Yay. Any Yay. Qu questions? Yeah. Thoughts? Sorry, I'm not late. Gotta practice it. Hey, Julia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, you turned up. How are you? you I'm going to just uh, give you the link after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. It, it was uh, two crashes in the highway. Oh, we no. might get longer my way home. And I really apologize. I really like your presentation. Uh, I arrived probably, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. Okay. Not so, 15, probably 14. <laughs> so Something like that. You're probably yes. here right near the start then. I, that's all right. I can give you a link to the, the thing if you want to look at the PowerPoint, but I've got it all on video now. So, um, yeah, glad I would you can make it. Well, just to go over it again too. Yeah. While I'm trying to practice. Um, <laughs> There was a, another section at the end. I, like I said, there was that website that I used. Um, they had some really great tutorials, karupa.com. And uh, they go into everything in real good uh, layman's terms, really. Um, and it makes it easy to understand things. So, I don't know. I thought that might be a useful tool for future things. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I would love a link to that um, PowerPoint, too. And then I have that link to that website that you sent. All right, cool. Um, any questions about anything that I covered? Uh, anything unclear? Trust me, I have to double check it. Yeah, it's not because of you. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I think you did great. Now I'm good. I might message you the question if I have one, but I can't think of any right now. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to end my.